but it's really fun to get to play um, a character. What's what's great about Angela is that she exists very subtly in canon, so I got to be the first one to play her. Um, and I don't think Marvel has a character that's the city of Los Angeles, but we do. So there you one go. up that. But don't though, because it's mine and I like it. I like your Joker. So uh, thank you. You know, a lot of actors when they go to a play a role, they, they try to find places they can draw from sure. for the character. Where did you draw from to play the city of the spirit of the city of Los Angeles? The really fun thing about a character like this is the best way to approach it is by not censoring yourself. And so getting to tap into that dark side, getting to tap into that sexy side, getting to tap into those things that are usually not appropriate for dinner table conversation uh, was really fun and really freeing. It's, it's not very often that you just get to go, oh, darker? Oh, sexier? Oh, okay. And, and to not have to hold anything back and to actually be rewarded for a change, for going all the way to the end of an impulse instead of instead of being slapped on the knuckles and told hey behave was it was really really fun and that I think is one of my favorite things about this movie in general is that it's not R-rated for the sake of our rating it was that we weren't told that we had to censor anything we were able to honor this world and honor Constantine and honor these characters in this story and do it right and that happens to mean in this case and our rating because this world is dark and the, the spirits that he works with are dark and he does smoke and those things honor the character and the world that the fans love and I think that's what people are going to really love about it. It's obviously difficult to know what the voice of the city should be like so <laughs> what was the kind of direction that you thought that you were going to uh, well, Wes Gleason, our voice director, gave me the best note ever on, on my first day. He's like, you know all that stuff that you're not allowed to do when you play Wonder Woman? You get to do all of that here. So for me, it became uh, really dark and warm and husky and, and grounded and, and rooted. That place where when you just kind of feel earthy when you're, you're, and your voice starts to come from deep inside your body and sort of resonating in your head and... And I was like, this character is so old and she has so much going on that she wouldn't she wouldn't push up into her head. No, she's she's of her body and she is of this space and getting to do that was really fun. Outside of Jessica Rabbit, you don't get to do it very often. <laughs> I was gonna ask why do you think fans would love the movie, but you kind of addressed that <laughs> saying, you know, honoring the character of the world. What is it about the character in the world that you think this movie gets so well? I mean, I think what it gets right is there's a level of... One of the things I've always loved about Constantine is there's a level of need that borders on a desperation when when he's not trying to fight it for how much Constantine wants the world to be ordered and to be right and to be good. He just has so many of his own demons to battle that you don't get to see that side of him very often. And he pushes so much to find the, that good through the darkness that he can see and that he's he alone can see so often. I mean, think about all the conversations that he has with Chaz, where Chaz is like, is this, is this a real thing? Is this really happening? And he's like, yeah, this is the real world. You just don't see it that often. And so to get to play fully in the world where that darkness is present, but he keeps looking for the hope, he keeps looking for the answers, he keeps looking for the solutions, I think is... At least for me, that's what keeps people coming back to Constantine is acknowledging the truth about the darkness of the world, but continuing to seek for hope and for light and for answers. And in this case, some of those answers come in sexier places than others, and some of them come in really sad places. And I think there's there's a turn that'll, I think, really be satisfying that's heartbreaking and powerful and really rewarding in this story that I think people are going to really like. Are there any aspects of the character comics that might not have been too prevalent in this version of the movie. Like maybe moving forward, you like to pull something from that to say, hey, this is another dimension of Constantine that we really need to know. But let's touch on this now. Boy, that is a big question, and I, I think it's honestly better answered by people who, like JM, who actually create Constantine. For me, the, the fun is to watch how, how fully um, Matt embodies this character at this point and how, how much he's taken it on. Um, I really like that because he's become 
a little more popular in the in the more popular imagination more people know about him I really like the kind of like lighter brighter sides that we've been able to see um, that we don't explore as much in this one um, and I think there's something really fun in I mean I, all right I, I like to see the day where Constantine doesn't battle any bad guys. He just has to live with himself. You know, I, I want to see the, the day where, um, you know, a lot of these heroes are just like, well, it's Tuesday and nobody's trying to blow up the city, so now what do I do? And we don't get to see that very often. Um, and I think it'd be really fun to explore. I apparently like really boring comic books. No, something like that seems to be more interesting, the character-driven stuff. Yeah. Of- <laughs> you can see a different side of the character. Yeah. It's the yeah, X-Men so playing cool. baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, so to us, so obviously, there's going to be a time lag to putting it right. on screen. Yeah. Is there any yeah. particular yeah. scene in the movie that really wowed you when you saw it? All I will say is there is a party scene that on screen is... Time. I'm just going to use the word disturbing um, to a degree that is really hard to convey on a page. And I now worry a little bit about our animators <laughs> because I was like, I was like, oh, that's when you read that, that's what you made. OK. Um, and it's it's really cool. It's a really, really rich, beautiful world. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.